Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a really awesome tablet. Now I will tell you that this isn't going to break the bank and it's putting out some amazing performance for what you're going to pay here. This is the Lenovo Tab P11 Pro Gen 2. Keep that in mind because uh, when you compare it to Gen 1, this is offering a giant leap in performance. And given the price tag here, this is one of the best deals on the market right now when you're looking at Android tablets considering the price of some of the higher end stuff on the market. We've got an 11.2 inch 120 hertz OLED display, quad speakers, and a really powerful 8 core CPU. And first things first, this display is absolutely beautiful. Coming in with a 2.5K resolution, so right there over 2K. Widevine level 1, so we can get HD Netflix and all of our favorite streaming apps. We've also got enough power to play any Android game on the market right now. It'll even emulate PS2, GameCube, and Wii games. So taking a look around the tablet, down here in the bottom we've got USB Type-C for charging up the unit, plus it supports display out. This has a desktop mode built in, and that's something I really look for when I'm checking out newer Android devices. Personally, love using these with a larger display as kind of a desktop replacement. Over here on this side, we've got our volume rocker, and moving around top, you see we've got two more speakers, quad speakers built in here with Dolby Atmos, plus it supports an SD card. I've gone up to one terabyte with this unit with no issues whatsoever. Taking a look at the specs, initially I was a little skeptical about this new SoC. It's the MediaTek Companio 1300T. It's an 8-core ARM SoC, and I haven't tested it on the channel yet. But we do have four Cortex A78 cores at 2.6 gigahertz and four Cortex A55 cores at 2 gigahertz. Through all of my testing, the CPU side of things is about 5% slower than the Snapdragon 870. But when it comes to the GPU, we've got the Mali G77 MC9. GPU performance is about 9% faster than the 870. And given the price here, coming in at 229 for the lower end 4 gig model, this is looking like a really good deal when it comes to Android tablets. You can pick this up with 4 or 8 gigabytes of RAM, and just like a lot of manufacturers, with the 4 gigabyte model, we're going to get less storage coming in at 128. 8 gigabyte model is going to give us 256, but they both use UFS 3.1 storage, so it's nice and fast, and they support a micro SD card. And by the way, we're taking a look at the 4 gigabyte model in this video. We've got an 11.2 inch OLED display at 120 hertz with a resolution of 2560 by 1536 and up to 420 nits of brightness. Built in quad speakers with Dolby Atmos, Wi Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.1, an 8200 milliamp hour battery with 20 watt fast charging capabilities. And this is running Android 12 out of the box. Plus, we have Lenovo's desktop mode, which they call productivity mode. It'll work on the built in display or over USB Type-C to an HDMI connection. I've spent the last couple days with this tablet and it's definitely really snappy. I mean, we've got more than enough power here to run Android 12. Everything loads up really quickly with Wi-Fi 6 built in. And it also supports Ethernet over USB Type-C, so that's also an option. But yeah, this thing is really quick here and the speakers on this thing sound absolutely amazing. To tell you the truth, I couldn't tell the difference between the speakers on this and the Samsung Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra, which is a $1,000 tablet. Now, the first thing I wanted to show you was uh, Widevine level. We're level one here, so yes, we can get HD Netflix, HBO, all of your favorite streaming apps will work in HD. A lot of the budget tablets on the market just don't support this, so you'll be stuck with standard definition quality, but, you know, I kind of suspected that we did have level one here, given that it's a Lenovo tablet. Media consumption is great, and I completely understand that we're not working with a 4K display, but I still wanted to show you YouTube 4K HDR 60 Hz. This chip has more than enough power to run these videos at 4K 60 with no drop frames whatsoever. Also, Wi-Fi 6 is definitely helping out buffer everything. And again, I can't get over how good these speakers sound. I mean, this thing gets really loud, super clean, and it's actually got some bass to it given how thin this whole tablet is. Really amazing. The next thing I wanted to show off was desktop mode. Lenovo is calling this productivity mode, and from the settings you can actually enable it on the built-in display of the tablet itself, but personally, I like connecting to a larger screen. You can do this with a USB Type-C to HDMI adapter, or if you've got a monitor that supports USB Type-C video in, all you gotta do is plug it directly in. And as you can see, on the tablet itself, we're still in tablet mode, but on the connected display, we're in desktop mode. 
You can set it up with your favorite mouse and keyboard. You can go USB or Bluetooth. It's really up to you. It supports multi-app, multi-window. You can connect game controllers and basically turn this into an Android-powered desktop PC. It's also got a snap feature, which really comes in handy to get a little more screen space. We'll go ahead and open up another app at the same time. And I've opened up about seven apps. Haven't really noticed an issue here. Running benchmarks in desktop mode versus tablet mode doesn't affect performance either. Now, if you're not into desktop mode or productivity mode, you could always mirror the display, but keep in mind, you're gonna get black bars on the top and bottom on that connected display because it's not the same aspect ratio. But even like this, we could play our favorite games on a bigger screen. And yes, we can go full screen with these applications if we want to. Next thing I wanted to take a look at were some benchmarks. And first up, we've got Geekbench 5, which wasn't as impressive as I thought it would be given the performance here. Single core, 793. Multi, 2768. I actually thought we'd score higher on that single core. Moving over to 3 d Mark Wildlife. This is a GPU benchmark that tests the Vulcan performance. We got a score of 4,203. And finally, Antutu, coming in with a 588,110. Not bad at all. And if you take a look at that GPU score, we're right there at 189,000. So of course, we had to test out some native Android gaming. First up, we've got Asphalt 9. Not a super hard game to run, but you know this does struggle on lower-end tablets. I'm not calling this a lower-end tablet at all. They consider this a mid-range tablet, but given what's on the market right now, I'd put this, you know, in higher mid-range. Minecraft, super easy to run, but I did want to show you that uh, you can connect your controller just using a simple Xbox One controller connected over Bluetooth. Fancy graphics is on. We're at 14 chunks. Minecraft, Roblox, you're not going to have a problem running it on this tablet. Another one that runs really well on this tablet is Call of Duty Mobile. We're at high settings, 60 FPS, and uh, I am still using that controller, but if you wanted to use the touch screen, you could. I just personally like using a physical controller, and since this game supports it, why not? And the final native game I wanted to test here is definitely a harder one to run. We've got Genshin Impact, but this does run at 60 FPS medium setting. Every once in a while, you will see a stutter here and there, so you might want to take a couple of the settings down to low, but overall it does perform really well. And again, we're at 60 FPS. You can go to very high 30 FPS or high 45 FPS, but I personally like running it at 60, so medium is kind of the sweet spot here. Now it's time to move over to my favorite part of these videos, emulation testing. And this little chip really does shine with emulation. This was one of the things I was kind of worried about, but uh, overall, I've been having some amazing performance. We're starting out here with PSP using the standalone version of PPSSPP. We went right into it with Chains of Olympus, Vulcan backend, 3x resolution, and it's running at a constant 60 FPS. I haven't seen it dip under, so you know, this game is definitely harder to emulate when it comes to PSP. The easier to emulate games here will run at 7x resolution. Taking it up a notch to GameCube with Automotalista, one of my go-to tests. We're at the native resolution, Vulcan back in, and I'm super surprised to see that this is running at full speed. And I'm not using a modified version of the Dolphin emulator. This is official from their website. It's their development version, but you could go with MMJ or MMJR if you wanted to. And since the Dolphin emulator also does Wii games, I figured we'd test it out here. Tatsunoko versus Capcom, Vulcan back in, 1x resolution, it's fully playable here. Now I'm sure that some harder to emulate GameCube games will struggle on this device, but you're gonna have a majority of them run at full speed. This is looking really awesome. So the next thing I wanted to do was test out some PS2 emulation using EtherSX2. And the first one we have here is Gran Turismo 4 using the Vulcan backend, and we're at 2.5x resolution. So we're upscaled over the native res of the original PS2, and it's looking really good on this OLED display. But of course, Gran Turismo 4 isn't a super hard game to emulate. I consider it a mid-range game when it comes to PS2. So let's move over to God of War 2. 1.5x resolution, Vulcan back in. This game is running really well. To tell you the truth, you know, going into this tablet, I didn't think we were going to get this kind of emulation performance out of it. But lo and behold, GameCube, Wii, PS2, PSP, Dreamcast, you want to do some 3DS at 1x resolution? It's more than possible on this tablet. So overall, I think this is a great tablet, and I do consider it a budget tablet given the price of other tablets on the market right now. 
For instance, the Galaxy Tab S8 starts at $500. Of course, it's on sale all the time for $450, but this was $229. The S8 is going to outperform this, but you know, that's a big price gap there. And when it comes to the Amazon tablets, I understand that those are really budget tablets. This is three times more powerful than the uh, HD 10 that they have on the market right now. So I would definitely spend a little more money to get this kind of performance. I'm going to be diving a bit more into desktop mode with this tablet. If you're interested in seeing a full video on that, let me know in the comments below. There's a lot of stuff we can do over there, but that's going to wrap it up for this one. I really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in learning more, I'll leave some links in the description. I picked mine up on eBay directly from Lenovo selling it. You can also go to their website if you want to. If you've got any questions or if there's anything else you want to see running on this, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.